What's up, everyone? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we catch up with Herman from Platinum Racing Products to talk about how to prepare your OEM RB crank to handle over a thousand wheel horsepower. I put up a post on Instagram the other day asking our viewers who would like to see what we do to prep cranks so they last 1,000 horsepower applications. Here we are doing a quick video on how to prep your RB crank. A lot of this is applicable to other cranks. Um, I'm just going to talk about the RB specifically because that's the crank that I know. It's the one that I've worked with for years. It's the one that I've tried to break. First things first, the keyway they flog out. We like to put one solid keyway in as opposed to the two small double Ds. It really helps. The other thing is tension on the front pulley. The RB26 bolt is bigger than the 30, so we machine the 30s out to take the 26 bolt. Next, I'm gonna talk about the collar. There's a short and a long nose RB crank. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. So you can, like this one, remove it, machine it down, and put on in a, an aftermarket collar. This one's a Nitto one. The most important thing there is as soon as you machine that underside to accept the collar, you want a nice big radius under there. If you machine it flat, right in the middle, if you machine it nice and straight, you're causing a, a, a fault line and it's extremely prone to snapping off. You would have noticed there's RB26 and 30 cranks that snap their snout off. That's probably the biggest reason. The second is the radiuses, we like to shot peen them. It stress relieves the surface. It's a cold forming, uh, hard shot, hardened shot peen that actually treats that surface between every radius where every journal meets every fly weight, the whole way through the crank, especially underneath the collar. I'm not gonna go too much into the details with how shot peening works. You can look it up. Uh, cryo treatment also works. I've had success with that. Nitriding a crankshaft that is not a nitridable or grade nitride grade steel, it's gonna crack. I mean, they all do RB26s, I tried heaps of them. They all crack, they failed. It's my experience only, and I'd strongly recommend not to nitride an RB crank. Next, we're gonna talk about grub screwing. The reason we grub screw, the reason grub screws happen is because there's an alloy bung punched into the, to every sort of big end of a, of a RB crank. Now, behind that, every time you drill it out, there is crap stuck to the back side of that bung, and you just gotta get it out. So you drill them out, you grub screw it, you can clean it out, it makes it easier to clean when you machine it, and all those metal fi filings go everywhere. It just ensures that you can get it all out. Next, I'm gonna talk about balancing. Absolutely imperative, you have to not statically, but dynamically balance your crankshaft. So find someone that will do that. To do that, they also need to get all the rods to weigh the same amount at the big end and the little end. All the pistons have to be dead on the same weight. You balance the balancer, the front gear, the bolt, the clutch, the flywheel, the bolts, everything that is spinning on that rotating assembly. Dynamically is the only way to get that right. That will allow you to rev these things to nine, 10,000 RPM, whatever you're gonna rev it to. Uh, the last thing I wanna talk to you about is straightening. It's barbaric but it has to be done. These things basically get put in a wedge and smacked with a cold chisel. After that, you would go and shop peen them just to make sure you're not causing a, a, any problems. You wanna make sure you've got no cracks, you wanna crack test your crank. But ultimately, most RB cranks that I pull out of engines, and I'm talking 19 out of 20, are bent, if not all of them. And I'm talking a thou is okay, two thou, Three is average, up to four or five thou bow in them. So before rebuilding your nice new engine with everything that's machined and all your new internals, be sure to go and check out if it's actually straight. Run it up on a mill or a crank grinder or a lathe or whatever you're gonna do. Put a dial gauge on it in the center and you'll know pretty quickly. If you can do all that to your crank, there's nothing wrong with pushing it and doesn't matter whether it's a 26 or a 25 or 30 crank, standard crank, it's not a billet crank and nothing comes close to a billet crank, but I make 1,000, 1,100 horsepower, it's been done, I've done it for years, 
and I've never broken a crank, a, st a standard crank. I'm not saying it doesn't happen or it won't happen, but if you do all those things I just mentioned, you eliminate as much risk as possible.